This video is to help you get a little bit better understanding of airflow on a roaster. A BC 3.5 and 5, the entire way, this is from 2022 and up, the entire way to control airflow is through the manual dial damper, which runs from 0 to 10. Obviously, the lower numbers allows less airflow to go through the drum. The higher numbers allow more. Now, anytime you're roasting, you need to make sure that, first of all, your drum speed is set to about 8. On the new 2024 BC 8 through 25s, it needs to be set at 9. If it's set any lower than that, the drums or the beans will not tumble in the drum as effectively, allowing the beans to tumble and fall and the chaff to flow through the drum and be pulled out. Uh, if it, if it uh, slower, less surface is available for the chaff as it develops and comes off the beans to be pulled out. Also, uh, it becomes harder if you go below uh, 75 or 80 percent. Some ro roasters, by the way, go 1 through 10 on the drum speed. Others go 0 to 100. So when we say 8 or 8, we mean 80 percent. Or when we say 9, we mean 90 percent. But if it's too slow and you turn your drum or your trier spoon up, you won't get any beans in the trier spoon because it's not tumbling enough. You also have more difficulty pulling chaff out of the drum and therefore more chaff will fall into the debris tray than should be. We're going to go through this and help you to understand that also what varies is the amount of beans you put in a uh, drum. And I'm going to demonstrate this by showing you a glass jar to be used as a figurative drum. So I want you to imagine this as the drum of a roaster and as you can see, maybe you've got a pound in the roaster and it's spinning around, or as you can see here, it's spinning around. Uh, it tumbles some because there's actually uh, um, flared areas in the drum that allows it to tumble. But basically the air going through the drum is only going to pull the chaff off of what is exposed. So anything that's covered is not going to have the chaff pulled off of it until it tumbles or until you increase the airflow. Now on a pound, that's not a big deal. But notice how much less surface space you have when you have five pounds in the, the drum and the air flows at the same settings. Now imagine this is five pounds in your drum and it's turning at the same speed, which you always want your drum to be about set at 80%, so in the window you see it tumbling at 45 degree angle, which obviously I can't turn it that fast by hand. But you can see there's a lot more beans that are not exposed to the air, and the only time they're going to be exposed to the air is when it's tumbling, and even then a big mass is always going to remain somewhat buried. Well, when the chaff starts coming off the drum at that point, if there's not enough air going through the drum to pull it out, it's gonna, some of it's going to drop into the debris tray. And the more that drops in the debris tray indicates that your airflow is too low. So while on a one pound roast during the drying phase, you may be able to keep it on two or three, you might find that on a five pound roast, you need to have it on three, four, or maybe even more if it's a real heavy chaff. And there's also nothing wrong if you notice a lot of chaff in the trier spoon on the roaster or even through the viewing window on the front door to increase the airflow even higher than four or five to temporarily pull out that excessive amount of chaff that's in the drum and then you can adjust it back down to maybe three or four for the end of the drying phase and then you're constantly turning the airflow up during the mallard or browning phase which is from 320 uh, to first crack you might have it at four five six 
and then maybe when you go start to go into first crack you may have it at seven eight sometimes even nine depending on the roaster uh, and that way you're pulling out all the chaff as well so hopefully that explains a little bit some of the uh, issues with airflow and how you need to make adjustments based on the size of the roast now looking at the roaster itself we want you to understand the airflow this is the manual dial damper which you turn on before you turn on a roaster. Now I'm preheating this roaster right now. So I always keep it on preheated at about 2. When I charge the beans I may go 2, two to 4 depending on the amount of uh, beans that are in the uh, uh, going into the drum. In this case we're doing 5.5 pounds. If I notice after I charge the beans that a, an excessive amount of chaff is building up in the drum which you can see through the trier spoon, the viewing window, or through the debris tray, I'm going to bump up my airflow. It might even just be temporary because at a certain point during the drying phase sometimes a lot of chaff begins to be released from the beans. And I may bump that all the way up to five, six, seven for a minute or so to clear all that chaff out so that a bunch doesn't pile up in the debris tray. If on the uh, other hand, if I failed to do that and I see a bunch of chaff building up in the debris tray, I could take this out and dump it into a, a non-flammable container, like a metal uh, garbage can or something, put it back in and continue on. That's why checking your debris tray fairly regularly during a roast, especially when you notice there's a lot of debris, is a wise move. Now I'm going to show you that how the manual dial damper while it's a great tool for adjusting your airflow much better than a lot of the electronic kind the with the help of this magnahelic airflow gauge we can get an idea of how well my exhaust is working and how uh, much air is getting pulled through the drum so what I'm going to do now as you can see on this particular one which is a 60 or this is a 30 pascal uh, some of the newer ones have 60 pascal you may not see it register until you get up to maybe three or four now I can see it's at about two and then as I climb more I'm now at about uh, four and it's at about five as I go up to four and a half it's going up between five and ten as I get to five it's at about ten or twelve as I get to five and a half it's now almost all the way up to 20 at 6, it's up to 25, at 7 it passes 30. So if you've got the 60 Pascal, you can see where it maxes out. Now your roaster may not register those exact numbers because all this depends in part on your exhaust system. If you've got a longer exhaust system, it's not going to be able to pull air through the drum as quickly. If you've got a shorter one, it may do it even faster. And uh, different things can affect that, whether the uh, chaff fan is kept clean, whether you've been regularly cleaning quarterly all your pipes, uh, cleaning the pipes going outside your, to your outside your building, and all these factors. But that's the beauty of the Magnahelic airflow gauge, is once you get used to seeing that at a certain range, if all of a sudden you see it cutting off, like say I've got it at five, and I'm used to seeing this at about 14, but all of a sudden it's way down to 5 or 10 or less, there might be blockage in that uh, venting or your exhaust system, and therefore you need to check it out. Sometimes even bird's nests have been built right where the vent is on the outside of the building, and it has restricted airflow. So you want to keep an eye on all these things. But as we go through a roast, I'm going to show you how you can adjust your airflow so to pull the proper amount of smoke and chaff out of your drum and not have excessive debris build up in the debris tray, although it is a debris tray designed to capture the debris between the front plate and the drum of the roaster. But I'm going to show you the proper way to adjust airflow and be flexible about doing it as you do roasts.